Hi, this is Jason in Final Engineering. I'm going to show you today just how easy it is to build and wire the Gobbit robotic chassis for our Arduino powered line following project. And some of the key features that really make this chassis stand out. Like the protected location of the Arduino board, yet still easy to access for plugging in and programming. Like the rugged snap construction for easy access to all the internal components for changing your batteries, for checking your wiring. All the things that should be simple, we've tried to make simple here. Like putting it right back together, snapping it, and getting going. So let's take a look at the steps of putting this guy together. We have the motors, motor brackets, the nuts and bolts for the motor brackets, the wheels, quarter inch long number two screws, the bottom deck, the upper deck, ball caster, an O-ring, the Plulu QTR-8RC line sensor, a switch with terminals, the an Arduino clone, an Arduino motor driver, the battery pack, Velcro, end plate, and some jumper wires. Female to male, we have 10 of those and we have a male to male we just have one of those and these wires they can be separated if you wanted I'm just going to keep them together because it makes it a little simpler for me and you will also need some batteries so here we go let's start with the motors and motor brackets the inside of the motor brackets have these little pockets where the nuts will go so we'll put the wires for the motors in from the outside Take a nut, put it in the little pocket. If you noticed, I have the hardware on the other end of the table for me, so I don't accidentally drop them or knock them off the table. Just lightly tighten it up. Do not crush the motor. Again, I put the nut in first. If it doesn't go in all the way, that's okay. When you put the bolt in, it'll help it kind of seat in place. And just turn it a little tight. That's all it takes. Okay, next. Again, wires from the outside in with the So here the, the nut isn't all the way down. It's not that it's stuck, it's just sometimes it just doesn't want to go in there until you just start to push the bolt in, then it flattens out real easy. I've just found from putting in quite a few of these that you don't really need to spend the time to make the nut go in perfect because as soon as you start putting that bolt in, it works its way in. Okay, next I put the wheels on. There's uh, two flats on the shaft, you just have to line them up. And sometimes you just gotta turn it a little bit when you do it and squeeze it on. There's one. There's two. Okay, next we'll put the ball caster into the bottom plate. The bottom plate is marked with top, meaning the top of the plate, this side is up. So we put the ball caster in from the bottom. And it's a press fit, so we get it in there, squeeze it, and we'll put this O-ring down in this groove as a retainer to make sure it doesn't come out. Push it all the way down in there. All right, now we'll put in the line sensor. The line sensor has male headers on one end that is actually to the back of the robot if you look at your wiring diagram that should go to the back of the robot the ball caster is the back of the robot so headers to the back line it up with this whole pattern okay I mean, there's places for four screws you only need two I like to put in three just to help keep it down in the middle Get your screw started in the hole. Do not tighten down all the way. 
if you have to push really hard to get this started, you're probably making a new hole, which is going to be out of alignment then. So you really shouldn't have to push hard. You should just get going real easy. And do not, again, do not tighten the screws all the way. You see I left a little bit of gap in there. Do not tighten them all the way until all three are set, or two if you're just using the outside. Then just snug these up. You don't have to crush them. Just snug them up. That's all it takes. Okay, next we have the top plate. Top plate. We have two hole patterns for the Arduino boards. We have, again, this is the front, this is the back. We have this location. I'm sorry, that location there. And then we have this location. We're going to use this guy. Okay, let's go ahead and use four screws to set that in place. Same as the sensor, just get them started. Don't tighten them down until all of them have been in, in, started in place. Whoops. And I do have a magnetic tip screwdriver. That really helps. Obviously, if you're working with sensitive electronics, you have to be careful where you put that magnetic tip. And just make sure this board looks like it's fairly straight. I'll go ahead and snug down all four screws. This will hold this on here really well. So you're plugging in your USB cable, you're putting on your shields. Everything will stay in place well. Now let's go ahead and set in the switch. Now the switch from the top, I kind of prefer this corner. You have, you have two spots, just choose whichever one you prefer and put the terminals where the wire comes into this towards the inside. So since I prefer the left and I also prefer to mount it from underneath, you can mount it on the top as well. Uh, I'm going to put it underneath so it's a little more recessed. Set that guy there. If you want you can put your end panel over this since the switch sticks out a little bit um, or you can hold the panel up when you're screwing it down. And two screws. Just line up the holes again. Same thing again. Don't tighten down until you get both of them in there. Just going to make sure it looks fairly straight. Not too bad. Okay. Put on the motor shield. Uh, you need to line up the cutout here with the cutout here and start the pins in the back carefully, get them started, and then let it seat in and evenly push it down. And it sticks, it does sit a little uneven, it rides on this barrel jack here. So that's what it hits first, it just that's just the way that these are made. So Okay, now I'll put on the battery pack, which is going to mount Velcro. Uh, I prefer, this is personal preference, the coarser Velcro, I prefer that on onto the robot and the soft side on the battery. So I just fold this over, squeeze it down, peel off the soft side. Again, that's just my preference. Set it on the edge of the battery, battery pack, get it straight, squeeze it down really good peel off the other side, get rid of my plastic, and I go ahead and set this guy in place, just kind of down the middle, and it looks pretty good, squeeze it down, alright, ready to start wiring. The switch works at the middle terminal when you flip the switch forward. The middle terminal is connecting to the front terminal. Whenever you flip it back, it's going the middle terminal to the back terminal. So whichever side the switch is on, or whichever end the switch is on, that's the terminal that is connecting. So you want to go to the middle. Uh, actually, we'll put the wire in from the battery first. Uh, the red wire from the battery. I'm just making sure I don't have any frays on the wire here. You slip it into the terminal. 
tighten this down with the flathead screwdriver or Phillips, whichever style terminals you happen to have. You get snug down. This will be tighter than the screws that we used into the plastic. And then I'll go ahead and put a jumper in here in the front side. The male to male jumper. And tighten this down. And good and snug. Okay? Now the other end of this jumper, I'm going to go into the positive in this terminal block here. It's the power end for the uh, Arjimoto. Which the Arduino will get power through the Arjimoto. Okay, snug that down. Now the negative, again, depending on your wires, mine have been used a little bit, so I'm just making sure there aren't any frays on it. Uh, put them into the negative, the black wire into the negative terminal. It's very important that you get the positive and negative correct. Otherwise, you can burn up parts of the Marjumoto. You can also make your batteries very unhappy, very hot. So, okay. Now we're ready for the next step, which is, uh, I guess, placing everything into position. And we'll wire the, the jumpers for the sensor and the motors. Uh, I guess first, let's do motors. So the motors are set up. If you hold them in your in your hands like... I guess like this. Uh, this would be my left. The motor is in front, down, front on the downside. This is left motor, right motor. That's the configuration we're going to use. They're going to go on like like this. So if I lay these out all in line, this is the front of the robot, left, right. So I'm going to take the left motor put it into A. The black wire goes on the outside which is A1. Red wire goes on A2 which is to the inside of these terminals. Okay. Now I take the right motor. The black wire goes on the outside. Of B, that'd be B3. Red wire goes on the inside. That would be B4. I'm referencing B, A and B are in here. A and B. And they're also then numbered A, 1, 2, B, 3, 4. That's what I'm referring to. And that's on the wiring diagram. Okay. Next are jumpers. So we have you can see on here, hopefully you can see that, we have ground, then 5 volts, then this is actually a terminal we're not going to use, and then it goes 1 through 8, sensors 1 through 8. So we're going to connect these first. I'll start on this end of the cable. The color of these wires doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to start with my ground. My five volts. So then I skip that one terminal. And I just go in line following the ribbon. This is where I prefer the ribbon. You, you can do it without. It's just this, when you have a lot of plugs like this, it makes it easier to follow. And this sensor has a lot of sensors on it, so you can really get a high resolution when you're following lines or trying to do whatever you're following, trying to sense whatever you're following. Okay, now we're ready to tie this to the Arduino. This is going to go, uh, again, ground, then 5 volts, so I have ground. 5 volts okay and I go to number th number 2 I skip number 3 because that's being used for the motors go to 4 and just follow the ribbon got them a little out of order here Four, five, P, 
pin six. Gotta make sure you keep these in order. Okay, looks good. Now I put it together. So, right motor goes here, lift up this panel. So you gotta push it through, squeeze it on, it pops in place. Set this in place, push it. Okay, I'll lift this guy up and take the U panel, the U end panel, slip it underneath. Snap it in place. And this guy is ready for batteries. Make sure you put the batteries in the right direction. The negative end of the battery goes on the spring side. Just like all the other battery packs you've probably used. But oh, I left the switch on. I should have checked the switch. but. Okay, and this just folds up. Make sure you don't have any wires in your brackets when you fold it. Check that there's no there aren't any wires in the brackets. It snaps in place. It's good to go. If I want to test it, well, you can run through the different your debugging, whatever you need to do. I'm just going to put a piece of electrical tape on here. This one already has a line following program on it. So that should be it. Have fun.